Kenya for your very own live African safari. My name is Brent Leo Smith. I've got Dangerous Dave on camera and we're coming to you live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. So we've got one of the Angama lionesses right next to us here. Uh, she's enjoying a bit of sunshine on top of Termitaria and uh, it is uh, what an absolutely gorgeous morning and uh, the Angama lions are spread out on this wide open plain just below the Ololoro escarpment and uh, we're hoping that they're going to be busy hunting at the moment. They look like they're just enjoying the first early morning rays of the sun. Remember, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you want to ask me about any questions that's happening here in Kenya. This is incredible, bringing you a live safaris from South Africa and Kenya simultaneously. Oh, she looks quite comfy in the morning sun there. Uh, when we first found her, she was marching through this long grass in search of warthogs, I'm sure. And uh, that is this particular pride's favorite feast uh, while they wait for the great migration to arrive. Now, there are some more of the lions spread out further down to the w w oh, east of us, actually, sorry. Um, but we're just going to see what she's up to at the moment. And as you can see, it's, it's beautiful and sunny here in Kenya, but there is a very cold wind. We had quite a bit of rain last night, which uh, Dave and I are quite happy about. It means we will no longer spend our days completely covered in dust, uh, which is what's been happening while it hasn't rained for the last few days. Well, it hasn't rained much, so the rain has dampened the dust and uh, we will look probably look a bit cleaner than we have been for the last few days there we go, you can see those lovely Balanites trees in the distance and uh, dotting the Mara and of course that's what the word Mara means it's sort of spotted or dotted uh, it's a Maasai word so and it refers to the open plains dotted with Balanites and acacia and shepherd's trees and there we go, you can actually, if we zoom in, we can have a look. And you see camp from, oh, it's camp hidden around the corner. And it's hidden around the corner. Oh dear, just around the corner. Um, of course, we're with the Angama Pride, and if we look to the top of the cliffs there, there is the Angama Lodge, and with a majestic view over the Maasai Mara. White Lady Eolin would like to know, what is the most exciting sighting we've had so far? Wow, that's a difficult question. Probably some of the cheetah hunts. They've been uh, quite exciting and, um, well, Dave's had three attempts. Unfortunately for Dave yet, he hasn't seen a kill, but Eggsy and I saw one. I'd say the cheetah and then, of course, the hyena and the buffalo. Uh, we haven't managed to get a lion leaping onto something. We've seen them attempt a few times, but they haven't leapt onto anything just yet. Now, there are some tipple skirchies in the distance on the other side there, Davey. And I think uh, there's another lioness apparently somewhere down here. I spoke to the guides this morning, but we spotted this one uh, as we were bumbling down the road and there we go there the Maasai giraffe tipple skirchy now this seems to be this pride's favorite area uh, we see them around here quite a lot hi Lauren in Illinois uh, Lauren would like to know what season is it in Kenya well, we're right at the end of the rainy season, so uh, the big rains. Uh, there hasn't been that big a rain uh, compared to what, what, what normally happens, but uh, we have had a lovely bit of rain. You can see the grass is nice and long and there's some greenery in it. And uh, so with the end of the rainy season, you have two rainy seasons here. Um, November, December, then you have a dry patch uh, through January, February, and then March, April, May is the big rains. So we're about to head into the dry season at the moment. But we should still get a little bit more rain. And uh, now we often spoke about when we're in Juma about how there's only really two seasons. There's wet and dry. And uh, it's pretty much a little bit different here. Because we're very close to the equator, in terms of temperature and stuff like that, it is very, very constant throughout the year. So, and in terms of temperature, it doesn't get too much hotter, too much colder. Your average minimum temperatures are around 10 degrees Celsius in the middle of the night, and uh, your average high is around 
uh, 28 to 29 degrees. Now MJ was wondering about the temperatures, so it's pretty pretty standard. It very seldom goes over 30 degrees Celsius, Celsius and very seldom drops below 10 degrees Celsius. So a very temperate climate, very pleasant, and um, of course we're very high here. We're at a thousand, about a thousand six hundred meters uh, above sea level, where we currently are at the moment. Uh, our up on top where the campus is closer to two, just over 2,000 meters above sea level. So it is very, very high and that's one of the reasons that the Masai Mara is so absolutely fantastic is because at high altitudes you generally get much better rainfall and uh, because of the volcanic soils here, uh, the Thamida grass, which doesn't normally grow so well at high altitude, has found this nutrient-rich volcanic soils with high altitude. So you get seas and seas of some of the best quality grazing in Africa. And of course that's what attracts those 1.6 or so million animals that form part of the Great Migration. Amber's wondering how close we are allowed to the animals there. Well, it depends on the area you're in. Um, it is oh, pretty much the same as the Sabi Sands. If, if they come up close to you, you can be as close as the animals want to be to you. Now, certain areas, like where we are at the moment, um, and especially after the rain, uh, you don't want to go off the roads because you will get heavily stuck in the mud. And when watching lions, one does not want to be digging and jacking and trying to put trees under your tires. Um, there, are also, there are also areas that are called high U usage zones and you must remember that this is not like the Sabi Sands it's not it's not private land so there are lots of people that come into the park so um, of course we we do have different permissions but you have high usage zones and and this is also a high usage zone it means there's a, the capacity for a lot of vehicles and a lot of vehicles off-roading would, would would be bad for the bush it would leave ruts and and affect seep lines and things like that so this area uh, for everyone generally is a no-go zone in terms of off-roading oh tired kitty but there are other areas and it all depends on the soil types and that and the, the Mara Triangle is a fantastically run reserve. Lexi's wondering whether we've had any animals through the camp. Well, Lexi, we do. We get quite a lot of animals in camp. Uh, we, the most common would probably be the zebras and the eland. Um, there's also some impala that come through camp. There's actually quite a lot of water bug that come through camp. And uh, baboons, of course, wherever you go, there are baboons. Um, and hyenas uh, that come through camp quite regularly. But the coolest thing that lives in our camp, and I'm going to tell you, you've got, to, you've got to Google it. It's called a Kirk's Dick Dick. It is possibly the cutest, sweetest little antelope that has ever lived in the history of cutest sweet antelopes. It makes a Sternbok look meh. It makes a Diker look meh. It makes a Sunni look meh. So go have a look at a Dick Dick uh, on, online and just Google Kirk's Dick Dick. They are the coolest little creatures. And we've got about three or four that are actually resident and live in and amongst our tents. Now, they're quite interesting because for a little antelope, they're mostly nocturnal, so they only come out really at dusk and dawn. Dave only saw his first one a couple of days ago, but we do want to get Dave's eyes tested. So um, they are they are quite shy and retiring, but the ones in camp are, are actually quite quite relaxed around people because there's been the builders and everyone up and down and around. So it has been uh, uh, quite a pleasure to watch the little dick dicks. Oh yes, well remembered, Darby. Now there we have a subspecies of thick-tailed bush baby. That is uh, that we see quite often in and around camp, and the coolest thing about them. So, thick-tailed bush baby is quite different from the one you see at Juma. Um, they do occur in South Africa, much bigger and fluffier. Except these ones are so big and so fluffy, and they're black. So, it's a, a minimalistic race of thick-tailed bush babies. Isn't that absolutely incredible? So, a subspecies of the normal thick-tailed bush baby that occurs. Uh, in these forests up on the escarpment and down towards the river. Now, we're going to move to see if we can find the rest of the Angama Pride. Hopefully they're not as snoozy and sleepy as this lovely lady. But while we do that, let's go see at Jamie who's scratching around in some scat.